In 1959, at a well near Slochteren in the Netherlands, Groningen's first natural gas was discovered. The gas field covers an area of some 1,000 square kilometers and has a gas-containing layer with an average thickness of 250 meters, making it Europa's largest natural gas field. Commercial exploitation began in 1963. The first earthquake in that area occurred in 1991. In the following years, there was an exponential increase in the frequency and a substantial increase in the amplitude of these earthquakes as a result of the exploration of natural gas. The earthquakes are causing damage to houses and other parts of Groningen's infrastructure, such as bridges, dikes, and dams. Damages to housing and infrastructure are already touching the 1 billion euro milestone in costs. Our solution to these problems seems rather simple. We inject water into the underlying water layer of the gas reservoir. As we increase the level of liquid inside the gas reservoir, we also increase the pressure inside the gas layer. So, if we inject water at the same speed as we harvest gas, there is no change of pressure inside the gas reservoir. Before we show you how this technology works and how we solve the problems that causes earthquakes, let us first have a look at what happens inside this gas field. Sediments of vegetation on the bottom of an ocean will, over time and under pressure, turn into coal beds. The added pressure of heat will make these coal beds release gas with a water vapor content. This gas travels upwards through the porous sandstone layer till it reaches an impermeable salt layer. Having nowhere to go, the gas builds up. The combined effects of time, pressure, and heat will separate this gas into three substances. Water, a thin layer of oil, and gas, filling the sandstone layer and creating a gas field. During the formation of the gas field, over a period of 150 million years, the pressure conditions inside the reservoir change through tectonic movement of the Earth's crust. The original reservoir pressure was 350 bar, but after an exploitation period of 50 years, they found that the current reservoir pressure is only 90 bar. The lower the pressure inside the gas field, the more difficult it is to remove gas. This means that at a certain point, the pressure inside the gas field will become so low that it will not be economically and technically feasible to remove gas. At the inlet of the well, gas is produced from the reservoir. In this near-well bore area, the pressure drops. Bernoulli's law for gas phases states that where there is a change in pressure, there is also a change in temperature. So, as pressure drops at the inlet, the temperature drops as well. This change in temperature and pressure creates condensation from the water vapor of the gas. This same principle applies when gas travels upwards to the surface installation. As the gas travels upwards, it starts to expand and the pressure drops as well as the temperature, causing even more water to form. The speed with which the gas travels is too low to drag the water up to the surface, so it falls back down to the inlet of the well. All this condensation and water will collect in pools and start to stream down through the sandstone layer. There are 250 wells that are currently exploiting gas, meaning there are 250 rivers. As these rivers stream down, they erode the porous sandstone layer. This erosion creates open holes in the gas reservoir. The combined effects of these open holes and pressure changes causes the sandstone layer to collapse. These collapses reverberate to the surface as earthquakes. So, if we can stop the erosion process, there would be no open holes, no collapses, and no earthquakes. So what would happen if we inject fluid into the underlying water layer? First off, we inject the fluid at the same speed as we harvest the gas, so there is no change in reservoir pressure. As the water level inside the sandstone layer rises, gas can be produced from the field more easily, meaning we can restore production to its full potential. An added and significant bonus is that we can now also produce most of the gas from the reservoir because water is replacing the gas and filling the open holes in the gas reservoir. Since water fills up the porous sandstone layer and the pressure is now constant, the sandstone layer won't collapse, halting the earthquakes. A simple solution to a complex problem that is economically profitable and environmentally safe. Even after all the gas has been produced from the reservoir, the old gas field can also be used for sustainable geothermal projects that generate electricity and heat.